I'm your host, Sarah Sorniak. I'm helping prepare you for your next journey and empower you to take it on. Whether you're searching for a job or facing a roadblock which led you to a detour in life, we're sharing stories that will help you put your best foot forward. Hey, it's been a minute. Um, I know over the summer I had talked about how I was excited to do more episodes of Best Foot Forward. Uh, and then maybe I put out one episode. <laughs> um, it turned out applying and interviewing for, for jobs while I was laid off over the summer was literally like a full-time job in itself. I was constantly... Um, having full days worth of interviews and anyone that's been on a job interview knows um you know that can be pretty tiring when you're you, number one you're talking about yourself all day long and you're trying to sell yourself on why you think you would be the the one for that role so uh and I really wanted to be mindful and use that time I had wisely and when I say that is, I mean, I firmly believe everything happens for a reason. Um, I have two little girls and, um, you know, not to like get down into the weeds, um, both my maternity leaves kind of sucked. I was dealing with health issues with both of them. And, you know, here I'm, I'm healthy, um, really wanted to take that time and just enjoy it with them, just me and the girls my husband of course was working um so here you know we're all healthy and it's a beautiful summer I mean if you're gonna get laid off it's not a bad time of the year for that to happen uh so you know between applying interviewing for positions and you know really spending time with me with them um those are my top priorities so as much as I love doing the the podcast uh this is you know one of my little little hobbies. I really wanted to focus on, you know, what was important in life. I knew at some point I'd find a position and be back to, you know, the 40 hour work week, uh, you know, not having that window of time back. And, you know, my daughters are, are very young and because they're very young, I am cool. And I know as they age, I'm going to become a loser to them and you know it's just the nature of the beast we you know we were teenagers once right so I'm you know I, I really believe you've got 10 to 12 years with your kids where you're everything to them not to say that you're not something you know as as they age because they depend on you they trust you but you're a superhero you're a super mom um you know at this point so uh, I really want to take advantage of that but anyway so my goal for 2024 is really to um, put out more more episodes of this. It's something that I enjoy. Um, whatever happens, best foot forward will always exist. Uh, you know, it, it may not be regular episodes popping out like how it was initially uh, when I started this. Um, my goal is to maybe do one interview you know, at least once a month. Um, I feel like that's feasible, um, you know, in the midst of the chaos of working full time, balancing family life, because um, family to me always comes first. And obviously my full time job comes first. I usually do all my content um, that I record or make or schedules usually always Saturday, Sundays during nap time uh, for our, our littlest one, because I don't want to, you know, miss out on on time with my family. So I want to take this episode to really talk a lot about what I see coming in question wise, you know, whether it's my DMs, um, whether it's filling out that Google form, I put out a post of many moons ago asking anybody if you had questions that you wanted addressed on the show um, to plop them in there. And I'm hoping these little tidbits can hopefully um, help you in any capacity in your job hunt or, you know, getting things situated. Um, you know, if you're trying to put your best foot forward, if you're laid off right now, if you just want to put feelers out there to, to see, you know, what is out there for you. And I think the most common, uh, question I get, 
And um, I do a lot of calls too. I do free calls. If you go to my website, you can book a call with me or go to one of my link trees, whether it's on LinkedIn or on other social platforms um, and schedule a free call with me is um, doing some critiques of resumes. So what a critique is, what I do, um, you'll send me your resume. Well, you'll book the call first. It's usually 15 minute. That's a really quick call. I'll usually email you back, ask for your resume and um, or cover letter. Um, usually it's mostly just the resume. Um, you know, and I'll look it over and I'll usually prepare bullet points on what you can do to make that resume better, to help you stand out. And some of the most common things that I'm seeing really are related to format, first and foremost. Um, everyone is trying to maximize as much real estate on that sheet of paper as humanly possible. So margins are just like spread to the edges, up top and to the sides. And if you're in the marketing communications world, you gotta you you should know from design perspectives, you gotta let that document breathe. And for those non-marketing communications folks, what does breathe mean? You need some white space. You've got to not try to take up every inch of that piece of paper. Um, you know, and and I get it, you wanna just showcase everything that you're capable of and what you've done. I get it. But you really need to, to the best of your ability at the highest level, pick three to four points of responsibilities or successes, things that you have done in that position percentage wise, like you've, you increase sales so many per, you know, percent, you know, per quarter, um, per annual year. Um, you know, if you've done any type of, um, you know, social media work, talk about, you know, your campaigns and conversions and, you know, leads generated percentage wise, um, you know, show action items of what you've been able to accomplish, um, you know, and, and try to really minimize how much space, let the document breathe, let it breathe, um, watch your fonts. I have noticed on so many resumes, someone might have Times New Roman in one spot in the bot. Like if you're talking the body of, of the content of describing what you've done, you know, one, one job, it might be Times New Roman. And then like the job below, it might be a totally different font when those fonts should match up. Um, in making sure title fonts are matching with different title fonts, um, the sizing of the font matches. Uh, I think because it just, when you're looking at your document you're just like, why does that look different from this? But it, you know, it's not flowing with the other formats of the pieces of the resume, so to speak. Um, you know, making sure you have, you know, the appropriate content contact information. I really encourage people, you know, if your name, look at your name, your full name. Um, if you go to GoDaddy or Namecheap, um, see if your name, your URL, www.sarahsorniak.com, see if that's available and grab it. It's, you know, not terribly expensive um, to grab. And, you know, again, if you're in marketing communications, you should have your own website. I don't care what you do in the marketing communications field. You should have your own website, um, you know, and you really should be showcasing your knowledge. And I'll get to that in a little bit. Um, you know, sticking with the resume, though, um, your resume shouldn't be a novel. It shouldn't be pages after pages after pages. If you're established in your career and you've done amazing things, then that's really great. Um, but if you're in your 40s and you still have your sales job from when you were 17 on there, you got to take that off. And I've seen it, um, which is why I'm commenting on it. Uh, just keep things relevant to your work history and even relevancy to the job that you are applying for, you know, with what you're trying to accomplish. I think those are, you know, really important key factors. 
Um, back to the contact information, if you're putting an email address on there, don't put don't put something that doesn't sound professional. Like Johnny loves um, jet skiing at hotmail.com. No, do your first initial last name or even your first last name at whatever, you know, gmail.com. Um, you want to keep things as professional looking as possible. Um, that goes, you know, quite an extra mile there on, on that. Um, so resume wise, I think those are the biggest things that I see that are really red flags and they're super simple to fix. Um, making sure that, you know, you've got spelling and grammar. You know, I've been in the past guilty of that myself. I think all of us, um, it, it, you know, you can, sometimes you need multiple eyes to look at something. So I think it would be really, you know, wise for people to, you know, have um, trusted colleague, a family member, a friend, take a look at your stuff to proofread it. And you can even use AI to proofread it too. I'm not saying that you necessarily need to generate AI created content for your um, resume or your cover letter, but you can use it to help you edit your work, you know, be very helpful and beneficial for you um, to make sure that you've got clean content going out in your resume. Um, some other things, what, you know, I think that the, the most common question coming in, you know, what can I do to stand out? Um, in the job hunt. And, you know, for me, I think my biz biggest uh, success was kind of going back to what I was saying earlier about that website. You should have your own website. You know, let it be, um, if you want to, depending on how you want to format that as, um, you know, a professional resume on your website, um, whatever your niche is, Whatever you're super, super, super good at, what you have the most experience in, what nobody knows better than you know, you should be writing blog articles about that. The pros and cons to something, why businesses should be doing A, B, and C. The best way that you can market yourself is to show what you know, show what you're good at. I mean, when you think about branding um, and marketing for businesses, you know, as marketers, what are we trying to do? We're trying to establish ourselves as thought leaders or the company as thought leaders, um, you know, trying to establish that trust so that people are going to want to do business with you, um, buy a product. As, as the marketing material would show, you know, consumer has a problem. How do we solve it? We can solve it. We have the solution. You should be using those same thought processes when it comes to developing content for your website. You should be posting that on, on LinkedIn um, with some copy, kind of previewing what your expertise is, what you've written about. Hey, check out my article. Over time, the more you share things on LinkedIn, your that that algorithm is gonna like kick kickstart for that organic growth, right? So the more you post, the more you interact with others and network with others, it's just gonna start slowly but surely elevating. It's a slow burn, I think, and I'm gonna get to slow burns later too. Um, but that's a common theme with career, and even with social. And anybody that does social media for their job would know if you're trying to do organic growth, that is a slow burn. Um, so you really need to know, you know, be invested in that. I post on LinkedIn pretty much at this point every single day. And when I was laid off, you better believe I was posting more than once a day because you know what? I didn't have a job. So, and it's my job to get a job and, uh, you know, spend the time making networking, making connections, introducing yourself, especially if you see a common person that you know really well that they're connected with, you know, use it as an introduction, send a message, put yourself out there, um, have the confidence to do it. It's going to move mountains for you. And really pivoting and, and projecting yourself as a thought leader, as somebody who knows what they're talking about, that's going to catch some eyes in the the job hunt and 
that's going to, and it's free to do that, right? Um, you know, obviously it costs money for a website, but for you to put content out there and maybe get a gain out of that or a return on it, you know, with it, whether it's an opportunity, you know, having recruiters reach out to you or even, you know, hiring managers reach out to you. That's going to, that's going to do something. And just for perspective, I applied to like, there were six positions that I was very serious about that I had applied to. I had five offers by the end of the summer. It only took me two months to find a job. And that sixth position um, was one I didn't want. And they were actually going to hire me. And you know what? I um, I figured I'm never going to have this opportunity again. I'm just going to lay out exactly what I want. And they wanted um, full-time in office. And they live, uh, the office is actually quite far from my home. And I tried to say, hey, would you mind if I, you know, work a day or two from home? And that kind of turned them off. So um, it was actually when I didn't want, I kind of set myself up to not get offered. So I potentially could add six out of six, um, you know, offers. I mean, did I apply um, to a lot more jobs than that? Yes, because with unemployment in New York State, you've got to apply to three positions every week. And I did. Um, you know, I definitely had other screen calls, but there were some that I was just, you know, not really feeling very much of a connection to. But out of those six main jobs, you know, there were, you know, the, to me, they were my serious contenders um, with what I was looking to. And there's remote positions that are either national or even global. And those are hard to get into. I know I get a lot of messages with people asking me about those positions and even having me post those positions on the Buffalo Communication Jobs website. And I'm very hesitant only because not to say it's not impossible to get those jobs, but it's really slim margins. And I wouldn't want to put something out there that I didn't think somebody could get. Um, they're, they're very, 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 very difficult. And usually the people that can get those, number one, it's either, you know, luck of the draw, something about them appealed, or number two, th that person has had um, high level jobs with very, very well known global or nationally known brands. So you have to kind of factor that into if you've only got local type businesses, you might have the experience for it. But if that person, that recruiter looking at that resume from a big brand that you're trying to get into in a remote position if they don't recognize where you're working from you know they might not they might not go with you um next thing I get a lot of um messages from um students who are getting ready to graduate college uh even recent grads who are really frustrated with the job hunt experience right now um and I get it I was there too um you know being a 21 22 year old you're just ready to hit the ground running ready to make your impact and move mountains and be a rock star and it's a humbling experience you know if you can't even get your foot in the door um you know you're good at something but you know, you're getting that age, although we went with somebody with more experience. Um, that's tough. And I don't want you to be discouraged. Because if there's one thing that I've learned over the course of, um, you know, under 20 years that I've been in the marketing communications field, it's that, that career search and the career growth is a slow burn. Again, using that phrase, slow burn. It's going to take time. And that's really frustrating. But when you're young, you need to look at it with some excitement because you're in the building phase. And as, again, frustrating as it can be to be in the building phase, it's also going to be so much fun when you start seeing things happen for you and also watching your progression when you're looking when you're high up on that mountain you know in a number of years and you can look down and say that was fun that's where it's at so you really need to just be patient and patience is a virtue 
there's a reason for that. Um, you know, and I, I feel you, I was, you know, I've been there too. Um, so just hang on tight. Um, make sure that you're active on social channels, LinkedIn, obviously being number one post every day, interact with people. If you're radio silent and then you're expecting to land some big, big opportunity, odds might not be in your favor. And I also encourage you to be just as active on other social channels like Instagram and um, X, uh, TikTok, anything that ends up popping up and, you know, new with social, you know, even still Facebook. Um, so many people in my calls, you know, they say, well, I really want my Facebook or Instagram or TikTok to be more private, you know, more my private life. And my answer to that is, if you're in marketing and communications, you don't have a private life. But if you want one, then I might suggest to you to create create um, multiple accounts. You know, maybe you have two Instagrams, one that's more professional based, one that's private and you can keep private so people don't, you know, see your content that you're posting. And, you know, for Facebook, you can actually create a page. Um you know, that's separate from your profile. So that way you don't have to worry about that. Um, but just know that, you know, you're kind of, you know, when you're in this field, you're kind of asking to be in the public, public life a bit. And trust me, that's hard for me to say. I'm actually an introvert, um, very shy. And, you know, you know, I kind of just bit the bullet. And going with that, I think it's really important for another question I get is how do I grow my social channels? I only have a couple hundred followers. So I ask you to put this in perspective. If you only have 200 social followers, which some of my um, other social profiles, I have about maybe under 300 followers myself, just because for a while there, I did keep that stuff private and then I kind of switched over. But let me ask you this or think about this perspective. How often do you have an opportunity to be in the room with 300 people to share your message? Not often, right? So even though it's only 300 people, that's 300 people. If you imagine yourself in a room giving a speech, that's 300 people is a lot of people to share that message too and as you create more content um as you network with others um that are in, within the field with you that's gonna grow you organically and over time slowly but surely you're you're gonna hit higher numbers um I had a question is it worth buying um there's so many platforms out there where you could purchase followers absolutely not absolutely not. Don't do it. Um, a lot of those are filled with bots. And, you know, I think there are a couple out there that they try to aim towards um, finding organic people that will follow you that aren't weird bots. But I don't, bu I don't buy it personally. Um, because, I mean, just, I don't know, maybe I don't have enough information or knowledge in this, but like, I'm not buying, like, Nobody has asked me like, oh, would you be willing to like follow this person? That's not how it works. Um, you know, no one's, you know, approached me from that perspective to ask me to follow people or, you know what I mean? I've never given permission for my profile to just willingly follow somebody. So, you no. Know, slow and steady wins the race, you know, uh, you know, using all these old, old quotes and, you know, they're, they're relevant and they're real. So, really don't look at it as a negative like oh, I only have like a hundred people or even two people oh. imagine getting people in a room for a speech to ha even have two to even have the opportunity to speak to 300 people it's not too shabby not too shabby at all so I think you should be proud of that and you know over time you will continue to grow um the other question I'll get is you know are there ways in which I can you know like how do I get myself out there I guess 
um which is a really good question um there's no doubt about that and there's ways that you can network and I think you need to pay attention um as as well with what is available to you um go on to LinkedIn um there's many um societies or network event like specific events that um working professionals can be be a part of I know me, I recently joined, um, you know, I'll give a shout out um, to the Creators Network Initiative. Um, Julia and Missy um, are the creators for that. Um, and I, that is really cool. I couldn't make their their last event, unfortunately. But they and that's julia jernsey silverberg and um, melissa fogarty who who run that you know i'm saying julia and, and missy like you know you you may you probably do know who i'm talking about when i say that but you know really want to give them give them some props for that um it's it's a great networking opportunity there are people who are not necessarily in marketing communications who are part of that but who have um creative tendencies and it's just you know it's probably people in a room that i might not normally have known or come across or you know, networked with and, you know, I've connected and I think um, the energy is unbelievable. So find opportunities like that where you can kind of get yourself out. Um, you know, I know everybody in that group thus far has been super supportive of one another. We've all liked and, you know, followed one another's content. So there's another organic way to grow your social platforms and, you know, and whatnot. So um, a lot of a lot of ways to kind of continue to grow yourself and position yourself, um, you know, as well. And, and, Hey, don't be afraid to start your own thing either. If you think, um, you know, there's, there's space for it, you know, put it out there. I think it's so important to be confident. And even if you don't have the confidence, cause again, I'm, I'm kind of shy and introverted. Um, I'm a firm believer in fake it till you make it. And, um, you know, and just be good and kind to people as well. Um, the other question I saw pop up was about the green banner. And I've seen posts too, and I've commented on posts that I've seen with it. Should you or should you not use the green banner, um, more or less, if you're laid off, for example, or if you're, you know, you are open to work, something's going, you know, mostly it's usually if you've been laid off. Um, a lot of people feel, shame behind it or um like they're damaged goods if they put it up and I've got so many thoughts on that um I remember initially before I was laid off I kind of was you know just like I don't know if I would use that I'm not sure because it like there is that thought process of like, I wouldn't want somebody to think like, you know, I might not be a good worker. Like if there was another reason as to why I wasn't, you know, employed at that point. And literally once I actually did get, get laid off over the summer, my entire marketing department was let go for, for restructuring purposes. Um, everyone, um, even my boss and, I kid you not, like the moment the call finished, I was on LinkedIn and I put that banner up. Um, I think it gave me so much opportunity. Now, mind you, I did a lot of work on my own outside of that little green bander. I was doing a lot of content creation to position myself personal branding is key for yourself if you really really want to set yourself apart from other candidates um but I got so many emails or LinkedIn DMs from recruiters and when I took that banner off after I you know found my position uh, the volume of messages from recruiters reduced so I think it's beneficial for recruiters and I encourage any recruiters out there to comment on this um, as well. Cause for me, it lets them know you're ready and able and willing to work. You know, you're open, open to work. And 
there's no shame in it. Most of us probably have rent, mortgages, student loans, children, families. And me as a mother, there's nothing I wouldn't do for my kids. Hands down. That includes putting a, a green banner up. And if I knew that a potential employer person, hiring manager, was going to judge me or view me as damaged goods or because I had that up, then I don't want to work for them. My personality is not going to jive with with that um, whatsoever. Um, they're going to miss out on an awesome employee. And that's their problem, not yours. So wave that with pride. Um, don't feel less than because you have to use it or you need to use it. If you're perfectly comfortable and, you know, you've got other income or you're not stressed about your job search, then don't use it. There's choice there. If you don't want it, if you don't want to use it, don't use it. If you need to or you want to use it, do it. There's no shame, though. Put yourself out there. That is the best thing you can do. Be open. And I'm going to challenge those out there that do feel that way, that are hiring minds, um, you know, decision makers or in HR. If you're feeling that way about a prospective employee, I'm going to challenge you to try to walk a mile in that person's shoes. Try to have some empathy. Um, I think emotional intelligence goes a long way. And not enough people have that. There's, unfortunately, in this world, you know, plenty of uh, intellectual intelligence, but I think so many people are are lacking in the emotional intelligence bank. So I'm going to challenge you to try to walk a mile in that person's shoes. We don't know each other's situation. We don't know each other's story. So before you assume that, you know, I wonder what they messed up to get, you know, to get fired or to get let go. Try imagining being in their shoes. Try imagining, if, especially if you have a family, if you've got kids, if you've got a mortgage. My decisions will always revolve around my family. That's my number one. So you really need to kind of step outside yourself and, um, you know, think of others. And, you know, that may sound, you know, a little too optimistic or unrealistic, but I'm going to challenge everybody to be a little bit more uh, empathetic out there. The world needs it, unfortunately. So I think I tackled everything that came across my way. Um, obviously, I could easily do more more solo episodes like this. Um, in regards to uh, questions that come into me just randomly, uh, you know, and if you if you've got any, you know, feel free to reach out. I'm always happy to to answer uh, any questions, and you know, stay stay tuned. And I thank you for your support. Take care. If you like this episode, like, subscribe, and hit notifications.